talk about the setup of the retractor system. And uh, we'll start from the beginning. Uh, we're gonna assume a patient's on the table, head of the table's there, tail of the table's here. So we're gonna put our first clamp. You have an option to put the clamp this way, or you can also place the clamp this way for, for placement. Then you place the other one next to the armpit on this side. The next step is to place post. You want this arm far enough down that you create as, as much of a straight plane of this retractor. This top one is not so important. You're usually gonna have an angle at that, but this one you want as straight as possible. You place it here at these areas where the marks are located. You can actually see the marks on the retractor system. It's good to hand screw these first. Then you're gonna take your retractor tightener, and this is just a hand tighten. You want this as close to the patient as possible, and the incision that you're gonna be performing needs to be in the middle of the exposure field. You usually we'll place four of these blade holders. Once you've done your exposure and you start utilizing the retractor, usually I like to tighten these slightly before we start the operation. And you just want it tightened just a little bit more rigid so that when you place your retractor blade in, you have an option to at least change the angle without losing uh, the angle completely because it's not tightened enough. Once you determine the length of your blade for your operation that is necessary based on the patient's body habitus, you're gonna place the blade in, you're gonna snap in, position, and then lock it down. Now, for example, on a 5S1, typically this one I would have angled to a little bit higher degree of angulation to allow this to fit into the pelvis or down into the pelvis right on top of, right on top of the sacrum. And that's your basic setup for the retractor blades.